lift our hands and bless him. Great is my God. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Yeah, great are you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. your hands and your voices. Give him praise. Hey. Bless the name of the mighty one. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. The heavens and earth adore you. Worshiping his presence. Glorious, 
a faithful God. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. Father, we declare that we love you. From everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. Let the name of the Lord be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. And let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We praise you with the sound of the instruments. We praise you with the clashing of the cymbal. We praise you with voices lifted up. For you alone are God. You sit upon the circle of the heavens. And you rule with the scepter of righteousness. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Your mercy is being new every morning. In majesty ride, O great one, in the midst of they that love you. From everlasting to everlasting, we declare that the nations will sing your praise. The nations will lift your voice. The nations will lift your banner. And every tribe and every tongue and every nation will acknowledge that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For you are glory. In all the earth, you are glorious. You are powerful. You are powerful. Ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. Like the dew of heaven, oh God. That brings freshness to the grass. Let the heavens be open and let the rain fall upon us. In the name of Jesus. We bless you. Majesty. I acknowledge you, the doer of every great thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some may trust in horses and others on chariots, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. And they sang the songs of Miriam and they said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. We bless you for your healing, for your deliverance. For the power of your word to change and build. For authority. For your presence. We give you praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus. We enthrone you. Sing it from your heart. And we proclaim His presence is mighty in our midst tonight Standing here In the midst of all We raise you high with our praise Lord build your throne And as we worship you Come and build your throne. As we worship you. As we worship you. Lord, you're the only one. One more time as we worship. And as we worship. Come and build your throne in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus, be lifted 
high tonight your people have come to receive and to be changed in the name of Jesus I pray that your power will be available to heal to deliver to bless that your word will transform us in the name of Jesus hallelujah God bless you please be seated it's good to be back and it's good to see everyone those of us standing really apologize appreciate all the workers and everybody for your diligence even while I was away thank you so much and um, I want to appreciate all of us again for consistently submitting ourselves to the dealings of the spirit there is a formula for impact there is a formula for carrying heavy weights of the presence of God. There is a formula for affecting a generation. And what is happening to you is the building that will lead to that. You are satisfying that condition. And you may not look like it now. But by and large, you will see the beauty and the glory of the Lord arise in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is taking us somewhere and we give him praise for where we see him taking us. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome every one of us. Thank you so much for being around. I want to talk to us tonight in a way that I hope will challenge us. This is a preparatory teaching for the series that we're about to start next month. And um, I trust that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very important. And I am praying, I am praying that not only do we pay the price to come here every week and listen to the messages, but I'm praying and hoping from the depth of my heart that we are submitting ourselves to these teachings. It's amazing how lives are being transformed and changed. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will keep changing. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head and pray in tongues and say, Father, do something in my mind and my life. Please pray. Now is not the time to stare around carelessly. Be focused and pray. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Do something upon this mind. I allow you to flow through me. Let my mind not be a limitation to my destiny. There is a voice that you have given me that my generation must hear. And everything that constitutes a limitation must leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, we listened again to the message, Hallelujah, that I had preached about allowing the kingdom of God to find expression. And in that teaching, I began to say how that the limitation of the impact of men is not the power or the ability of God, but our mind from the realm of where we allow our wills, our emotion, and our intellect to come under submission to the government of Christ. And that if we can satisfactorily do that, there is no limit to which God will be able to use us. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Let's begin tonight. I want to establish a few things and then we'll pray. You make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward that's what he's doing in someone's life tonight you
God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others. Until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom, you may think God has favorites. God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny. And the degree to which we come into alignment with God's precepts is the degree to which it looks like God is tilting towards our direction. It's very important that I say this because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything. Among preachers, the difference is clear. There are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make impact. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising armed robbers and cowards and thieves and and nuisance to society in the world of impact there are those that the hand of God is mighty upon they are shaking lands and territories and yet there are others crouching and scrambling for relevance what is responsible for this difference could it be that God decided to choose others could it be that God just hated others is that really it? What would be responsible, brothers and sisters, for a man who rises up as a nobody? The map of your village not being on the map. And yet you rise to be a global phenomenon where people say, thank God you were born. Thank God you did not die. Blessed is the womb that produced this child what makes that difference that a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life he is a generational blessing his name becomes an access key to favor that every time you say i am associated with sam they say which sam because of that access is given what is responsible for this difference in society It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know it is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts we will never win souls that way till jesus comes the key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the christ is hidden in one word influence 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 the mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the lordship of christ everybody say influence influence will do more than tracts will do influence will do more than crusades will do influence at every given point in your life your decisions your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model consciously or unconsciously and therefore the key to bring in earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ 
is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology. Like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it it shines hallelujah christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until jesus comes christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married christianity is an ideology the faith life is an ideology it's a movement it's a cause there is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind. And he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. His emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. And that's what we call being born again. The establishment of the reign and the rule of the Christ in the hearts of men. Not just coming for altar call. Cult, altar call is not enough to get you born again. It gets you saved. But to be born anew and to be transformed, the Christ needs to be established in your heart. The degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom, is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first, the Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitations is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's alright, I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development you ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life. In every respect. I can never change you. 
until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One, to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One, to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty men in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. When you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries. You will find a reason to say Lord I thank you. The training process is always difficult. Because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it. Because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears, 
But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens. Number one, a father and a son platform. A transfer from a father to a son. Number two, a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice. Number three, a transfer from a teacher to a student. You cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague. No, sir. It's against the law of impartation. That means every time you want to receive, one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser. Even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching. And immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree? Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry, limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light, no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down, not for too long. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I walk around, as I travel around, I've had the privilege of traveling to different territories. I study culture a lot. In fact, whenever we travel for administration, if time allows us, we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into and concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up. Otherwise, you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you. That's what has happened. We have a generation of irresponsible people. Spiritually irresponsible. Mentally irresponsible physically irresponsible there has been a transgenerational game of blaming people one generation blaming another for their failures one generation blaming another nigerians blame government africans blame their parents they blame institutions our refusal to turn and say what can i do to live where i am gideon was a little boy who was hiding 
he heard of the miracles that happened and now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says oh thou mighty man of value can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation let me tell you something my message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement if you have that kind of mindset here your first assignment tonight is repent can we have the windows open i think the rain is hallelujah everyone say in the name of jesus i take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say one more time in the name of jesus i refuse resentment i refuse blaming people i make up my mind that from today i take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life that's right that's the, the decision that begins to change your life you say this among your colleagues and they will insult you some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God that foolish man was a herbalist but what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray in one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. 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 I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. I'm a lady, that's why. They should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed, that's why. I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and he didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people 
who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives, you will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies so I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan. To challenges and to success your mindset your ideologies determines your response to God people Satan challenges and ultimately success The Bible keeps telling us again and again. Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. That isn't it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter I believe 4 4 verse 23 Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family you can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell is that serious keep your heart it is your responsibility keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor James. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God would use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having in it I teach on the power of decisions do you know the difference between a decision and a wish this is it I want to drink water is a decision that's the water there I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water are you seeing that now a decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result 
Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish. I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and things, they think we are idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law, the law of manifestation. And that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset. The inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Key, or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right, of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this. Transfer them for two months. Transfer them. Meaning, tell the megad, we hereby give you this office. It's yours. For two months. And tell the ogre, go to the gate. The ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office. They will start waiting at the gate. There is a mentality. Are you getting my point? He's going to look and say, is there something we can do? Is there something we can do? Right there at the gate, he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, he will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating and quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it and he thinks what can I sell quickly and they say oh God generator has spoiled he say leave it there in two months that office becomes his mindset are you seeing that now you come in and see it dirty scattered they've sold a lot of things 
they've sold the company generator they've done all sorts of things right workers are not paid whereas you find out that the, the blessed man the ceo has changed the gate and he will make it become something what is the difference their mindset they think the difference is money they think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars no those things are a reflection of something when you see a man mightily used by god his life is a reflection of something are, are we are we following are we together the next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed do not envy what you see try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit are we blessed that's why success is, is transferable if i can transfer to you what is in my mind you will be like me but you will stop at my limit if i can transfer to you what i have and challenge you to rise higher you will be higher than me you see that preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset a preacher who is not for instance an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people all he would tell people is just pray and be serious the god of favor god of hannah god of this the god who located me will locate you and the people shout amen and they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people the preacher himself not knowing why he's successful he thinks he's successful because he's preaching no guard your heart there is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you there are some of you you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life something about you resents people from you and if you do not take the time to study it and change and say i'm like that my mother never had any friend only me you see it the transference let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people right Number one is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage that there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard a status quo are you getting my point it's a terrible mindset a terrible mental state of being because it produces dangerous fruits and we're about to see a few of them let me tell you the foolishness of many people in society from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders is motivated by this poisonous mindset subtle but dangerous low self-esteem what does low self-esteem do low self-esteem when it is matured in a man becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem are we blessed so a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair 
she can't be beautiful and guys will not see her. Wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weaver is 15,000 and that becomes a goal. She's under pressure, borrowing money, trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it, she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo. It's God speaking to us. So we have preachers with their clubs and societies. Right? That is based on something they believe they have to do to match up. So a man of God thinks I can teach but I can't prophesy. And his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow. Are you getting my point? Even to the point of witchcraft. And when he gets it, he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me, I will be like so, so, so man of God. Are you seeing that now? A poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director. And his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months, have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. To prove. And you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us. Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing. And some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that... Oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> Is God speaking to us? There are many preachers. They start preaching now. And they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who. As a proof. Right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages, we carry our pain, we carry our backgrounds, mix it with the anointing, mix it with ministry, and off we go misleading many people. Yes. So he comes to me, and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people, and just say, God bless you, how are you? No. Because if how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. 
if, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you, give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband 10 times and you drove him 10 times. Because something in your mind, you live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you and they say, Kai guy, you represented us. <laughs> Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that all of those things, some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody, the clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in, that mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half caste. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus. I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a jeep. Say, Mary, bought a jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out. Find out what? And you see, when you are determined to find out things, you will always find something. Is that true? Low self-esteem. Number two. Is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words. Uncultured use of words. Psalms 141 verse 3. An uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. It said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. 
there are many of us right now where you are seated the devil of your destiny that which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life is this gate called your lips hallelujah the gate of uncultured words many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word are you getting what i'm saying do you know that these decoration people there's a way they behave uncultured words many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep how do you know see that lady that fine one the other one that very fine one that's my wife in fact i'm even planning i think i should get to germany hopefully there's one morning i'm waiting and while you are talking the elder is nodding say where did you even say you are going again say germany everything has been working all of a sudden everything scatters our mouth there are many of us you plan to buy a car in 10 years you have i'm not saying confession of faith telling people look in fact right now the last time we went to kotono and it's a lie pressure to say things that should not be set a watch put a gate oh god in my mouth that i will know when to speak nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren you carried your mouth running it around telling people and saying don't tell anybody for what say i don't know you or don't tell anybody it's me that said benga's wife this and that and that happened How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh god over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um i'm i'm, I'm we're going to get married let me just calm down i'm trusting god for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say i'm not doing and the friend say how far our marriage hey, god is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said, there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of 5 million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. 
and she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, sir, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. Though. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me that ah, this and that and that, this person did this. Can I imagine that this person did this? She was so disappointed. She's still been disappointed. She still did this. And I said, shame on you. One. Because you were, was it not in a room? Was it outside? It happened. You went to the room. You were also tempted. You will not accept that part of your role. The role you played in seducing him. You, are you saying you did not see the advancement coming? You were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it. Is that not how it happens? It was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it would now cross the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I know she has told more than hundreds of people right there. And you, you, you destroy. Now, listen. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communication unguarded communications matters that don't concern you it's amazing you hear people talking about their father talking about their mother talking about their sister a lady met me and said ah that uh, her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to, people say, may God forbid. i rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian, oh, uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower and blind f buying flower and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13? You are just coming innocently. You don't know. You you think she's a nice lady. And the guy said, eh. Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us listen. Mindsets, listen to me. It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, the Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. The Creflo Dollar asked his congregation, to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry. There are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen. Give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this. Stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering unguarded use of your mouth. You just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes. 
Are we growing tonight? Some of these issues look little, but this is what makes leaders out of people. Notice that leaders are calm people. They are people who evaluate things. They are people who look into things. Because one day, somebody is going to say something about your life, your ministry, your business, something. Is that true? I remember when one woman, I think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia, we emphasize the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. He said, that's witchcraft, that's signs of the end time. And the person was hoping that I would respond to it and I just kept quiet. I said, glory be to Jesus. And that was the end of it. Because sometimes, I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus, that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And then it ruins your life. And then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. Somebody comes to gossip to you and immediately he finishes the gossiping about Tosin. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry weight. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why? What is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him everybody will come and say we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tight of his billion there are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous don't think everybody is struggling there are people seated quietly here i know them There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Graced of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office. Yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was given caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip 
be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house. Because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life. And the most sincere woman. That my neighbor's friend. I've seen my neighbor two times when you know, our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless? Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth? My mouth will not be the reason why I would destroy the life of another. Anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings. In Israel, if you curse somebody, they will kill you because they understand the implication of words. Is God speaking to us tonight? Many of us have made ourselves cheap. When you started out, people respected you because you were a man of few words. Right now, you have become a talkative. And gradually, you see that your respect has been going down. Have you seen people like that? One moment, they are rest. In fact, when they come, they say, sir, good afternoon. At the end of the conversation, the woman says, okay, my son, I've heard about you. Whereas, when you came, she said, okay, man of God, I, I covet the grace upon your life. But you threw away your honor. Everybody, write this word down. Honor. Honor. These are the principles that bring honor to your life. Value honor more than money. Value honor more than reputation. Money cannot give you honor, but honor will give you blessings. Honor, the ability to recognize and reward your difference, is what we call honor. Uncommon principles that will make you exceptional. Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man think it, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which makes kings. That which makes nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things. And we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind? When I find out that there is something flawed in my life. How do I start? Now I've found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I've found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that there, there is a need for transformation in that area of your life. Transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept. There are some of us here, God has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings. But something about our mindsets keep throwing money out of our lives. 
Favor brings money to your life. Wisdom throws it out of your life. There are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us, but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in a church. You don't study the way the church setting is. You just stand and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I pay the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. Because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself. But this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing. But these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life. And the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person. You just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so this and that and that. There was a young man that was standing well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come and the young man just stood there and I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia, I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of... No, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there. And bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, this person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine. Little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional. Many of us are anointed, no doubt. But many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion, the wisdom that makes men exceptional, the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives. That mental adjustment. One more time, lay your hands on your head. And say, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect another word you can put is respect the mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life it will make you a magnet by and large after preaching there are things you do that makes you lovable it makes you inviting look at me come sam if sam comes and finishes preaching watch this and then i come up as a man of god and i just collect the mic from him and i say sam that's nice my boys are really growing you see that watch this am i anointed yes do i love god do i love souls do you think my relationship with sam will be sustainable no because i simply violated his self-worth to prove a point there's no attitude of respect and courtesy. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? Never you usurp your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take, hello, what are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar, oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And it turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life. And I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Don't say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodun, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, Handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like I will find something to reciprocate and so you become a friend of everybody when people are suffering from complex they run to you because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome you have an atmosphere when I finish Koinonia here I've been I've been tired since morning 
but I have to stand here to at least the people are joining a line that is already embarrassing for me because I know some of the people standing in that line it's not like there are some helpless people but they humble themselves and they stand and to be able to do that I give them a hug I talk to them with courtesy all our little children that come to hug me here, I honor them. That's why immediately after service, they come around. You, the little children sit near you. As they are sharing the grace, they are running away from you. Something about your life is driving them. That's how a business partner will look at you and say, you don't have the skill for business, but there is an attitude. There's something about you. I want to do business with you. There is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you. And you step into favor favor that you will never recover from there are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened but because I honored my way to them I treated people with courtesy and I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed is God speaking to us? The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding you will endure misinterpretation you will endure a lot you will make sacrifices you will endure hunger but he that endures let me tell you when you see a blessed man respect him don't ever see any man either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now, you cannot respond to us? Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level.
listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws and do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me, me, God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice and endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. Endurance. Endurance. Endure hardship as a faithful soldier of Christ. You went to win souls, nothing happened. You went for that meeting, you thought the power of God would move, nothing happened. And you seem to live in shame. Don't worry. Keep fasting. Keep praying. I know you went and it looked like they dread you. You went to sing and you lost your key. You lost your voice. You embarrassed. Don't worry. Let them keep laughing. Don't be under pressure to prove anything. And say, no, it's, I can sing. Oh, what happened that day is I had kata. Forget about all those explanations. Kata or no kata, continue. A day will come. You will be noted for persistence. And your critics will become the advocates of your lifting. When you endure, if you give up, you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution. But endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you, you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary. And now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen. It's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life, today, it has translated to the salvation of millions, the transformation of lives. Seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure. I know you have been taught that if it is of God, it must come cheap and easy. No, sir. There is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown. This is a very deep teaching you must endure we are going to pray oh I will endure no matter what it will take I will endure as you are sitting down right now there may not be one naira in your pocket but endure keep tightening some of you aside from boss you may trek home endure some of you, you go and receive as old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Mm. Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. 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 You don't have suits to wear. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Endure. Is God speaking to us? I choose to endure. This is how this ministry came. To see what God is doing today. And to see where he brought us. And to see where he's taking us. 
endurance. Endure the mockery. Endure the shame. Never be under pressure to prove yourself. At every given point in your life, those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you, you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet. As a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come. His honor will come upon your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the word tonight. Pray. The mental composition that makes you victorious. The mental composition. I give you a guarantee with the integrity of God backed up. It will make you exceptional. It will make you notable. Are you praying, Koinonia? Hallelujah. I like you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I bring my mindset under the Lordship of Christ. That every mentality in me that is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness. I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset is the key to the increase in the anointing is the key to the holy spirit doing mighty things in your life the key to you being a champion the key to you breaking cultural barriers the key to you being mighty i don't care where you are now i don't care what is wrong now endure be strong be strong hold on be strong Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. The name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ. The resultant effect of this transformation is called the mind of Christ. Then you become an envoy. Then you master life. Then you become a champion. Men honor you as if you charm them. Everywhere you go, you are a magnet. And people are saying, what? I'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life. Please give us Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Mm. Oh Lord, I pray that your people will listen. Permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the word let there is permit allow it God is saying change I want to make you mighty you came from Kogi state I know there is witchcraft but can you adjust your mind and see a champion that I will make out of you I know you are weak the whole family stays in one room but can you make that shift in your mind let this mind be in you. 
let this mind be in you koinonia let this mind be in you upgrade your mindset don't let culture cheat you don't let your past cheat you hallelujah i like you to lift your voice and say lord i reject inferiority and low self-esteem you have made me great i'm not cheap i'm not a local champion i stop trying to do things pray 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 i stop trying to do things to prove a point i stop trying to borrow money to look rich i stop trying to tell lies to look like i'm making progress i reject a life of falsehood i move gradually gradually level by level pray i reject low self-esteem i am fearfully and wonderfully made no culture no cgpa no financial level no challenge will ever make me feel bad job or lack of job admission or lack of admission marriage or lack of marriage let it never get to you and make you feel inferior pray satan the lord rebuke you i refuse to feel inferior the favor of the lord the favor of the lord a champion on my way to happen hallelujah hallelujah now this prayer point i like you to pray it with all your heart say lord my mouth has brought too much trouble in my life it will not continue like this i set a guard over my mouth i have gossiped my way to trouble i have lied my way to trouble i have i have joined the heads of people and friends i've done a lot of things that have destroyed people go ahead and pray i offer my mouth my tongue my lips from today it becomes an object of blessing an instrument of lifting pray i add character and a healthy mindset to my anointing I speak aright. I speak only when I need to. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. May I not destroy my friends with my words. May I not destroy my destiny helpers. May I not drive away my instruments of breakthrough may i not scatter my family with my words may i not destroy ministries may i not destroy my academics may i not destroy my anointing with bad words uncultured words hallelujah hallelujah number three we are going to pray say lord from today i have respect and honor for all men regardless of who they are regardless of who their parents are grant me grace to demonstrate genuine respect and honor for people those higher than me my contemporaries and even those lower than me lift your voice and cry to god I repent of my rude nature. I repent of my pride and arrogance. Lord, I receive grace. May courtesy open doors of access to me. May honor open doors of access to me. I 
Are you praying? Put a God, oh God, on my lips. I want to be exceptional. I want to be exceptional. I want to shorten the journey to my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, hold hands around. We are going to pray. Because you will need grace to fulfill this sign. You are going to pray and say, Lord, over what you have called me to do, I will endure. Over the preparation, I'm in the school of the spirit. It does not yet appear, but I will endure. Lord, men are mocking me, but I will endure. My finances are mocking me. My lack of marriage, my lack of childbirth is mocking me, but I will endure. Lift your voice and pray. A supply of grace. A supply of grace. I refuse to be under pressure. Pray. Pray. Grace. 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 To continue in the midst of harsh conditions. Grace. To continue in the midst of persecution. Grace. To continue. That ministry must not die. That anointing must not die. That business must not die. That job seeking must not end. I endure to the end. I endure to the end. There's no food now, but I endure. I don't have friends now, but I endure. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching is, is um, really all the teachings that have been coming are preparing us. There is a mighty, there is a series I look forward to starting. But all of the series that have been coming on faith and all of these things, they are, they are preparatory teachings. Hallelujah. I told us that this year, I want my goal is that our lives will be so impactful so impactful in every area hallelujah that in this year you will carry the anointing of the spirit in a way you have never carried this year you will carry the wisdom of the spirit that there will be a testament in your life that the rain is falling hallelujah and to do that we must be guided through strategic teachings strategic teachings now teachings are like like paint brushes you are able to the artist before a painting happens on a on the whole board and all of that the artist already has an idea of what he wants but he needs the medium of the brush and the colors and he begins to play out what is in his mind there is there is something in the mind of God for you in 2015. Hallelujah. And I'm just like an artist walking in partnership with the Holy Spirit to make sure that the exact picture that is in the mind of our Father will be made manifest in our life this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight's teaching is really going to challenge us. Um, And help us to be better people, more effective in every sense. In the name of Jesus Christ. My status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. Status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way to better day. Prophesy, that's what is happening to us in the spirit. Status is changing. It's no more decline. 
We're on our way. Talk to your neighbor and prophesy. Tell him my status is changing. Status is changing. Listen to me. There is nobody who ever won the Olympics by mistake. Are you getting me? Those illusions do not exist. Every dimension of success, be it spiritual, be it financial, in every sense is strategic and intentional. Hallelujah. Nobody, 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 there is no successful person who cannot show you the formula who cannot show you the pathway he followed hallelujah you may not you may not see the full picture right now but brothers and sisters let me tell you it will not take long there is a kind of grace that when you sit under it implicates you it will not take long something will burst open it's like you are blowing a balloon you know how you keep blowing a balloon a time comes it doesn't matter what it is it just cannot take it and i perceive in my spirit that we're getting to that point i've been singing this song it's not a special number sometimes some songs help you articulate seasons 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 hallelujah I sleep with this song i wake up with it is my prayer and i know that there are certain people some mantles have long waited for you you see and and there are there are shoes that many of us will step into you will be amazed i hope you know that i'm not a politician when i stand to speak i'm not this is not a manifesto this is a communication of what the spirit is saying there are certain levels of graces that people will step into just know this brothers and sisters there is no mistake about success at any level there is no mistake there is no mistake hallelujah praise the lord please pray in one minute and say lord no distraction tonight give me such an unusual ability to listen an unusual ability to be focused inside and outside even if you have to sit on the fence even if you have to stand don't worry just pay your price now only a foolish athlete complains during the times of discipline only a failure looks for comfort during the time of training the bible says there's no man that worried who will entangle himself with civilian affairs Humble yourself and submit yourself to the dealings of the spirit and see how mighty you will become. I don't care what the limitations are. Take your eyes away from them. Hallelujah. Now I want you to sing this song as a prophecy. Sing it to yourself. I'm on my way. Listen. Nobody in your family may have crossed that line before but as far as you know god is leading you there is a path it says there is a path which no foul knoweth. the whelps of the lion has not gotten there some of you as ordinary as you look just let the word of god finish its course in your life i'm on my way on my way i'm on my way I'm on my way On my way No matter what the failure has been No matter what the limitations are Prophesy, challenge your fears I'm 
song came about he was blind are you hearing me he was blind and one time a doctor looked at him and said this is your condition I can do something about it and he was surprised you mean my eyes can open and he began to pray and talk to the Lord and the Holy Spirit told him the meaning of that is that your status is about to change yeah that's how he wrote the song he was not just a musician that so this can change that once upon a time everybody looks at you in your family and thinks you are just one of those bunch of failures but you come up from another route that no man has seen and you tell them i may look small now but there is a hand that is holding me i may have made all kinds of mistakes in the past it's easy to judge me by my mistakes of the past but there is a hand holding me it's true that jesus died but he only died for three days he didn't die forever while others were talking about his death he had already resurrected status is changing there's no more decline I'm on my way that the doors that refuse to open to you must open in this season there's no more decline Father, in the name of Jesus, take us higher. We are praying this from the depths of our heart. Take every one person from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from grace to grace, from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm led to lead you in just one prayer. Say, Lord, make me successful. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayers. Pray it, not for your neighbor. Just say it, make me don't say I want to be successful. That's not a wise prayer. Make me. Please just pray. Whether you understand what I'm saying or not, just follow what we're doing. Take your eyes away from what you are not. Take your eyes. Just say, Lord, make me successful. By every standard. We're on our way, on our way. Hallelujah. 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 Seven years ago, I said this. These were my exact words. I said, We will all be successful. And the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. Seven years ago. I said this and I have not stopped saying it. This is a revolution. You may not look like it. But let me tell you, don't play games with the Holy Spirit. Once he holds you, he will make a wonder. 
he turned the lives of ordinary men forget about what men are saying about you my bible is full of the archives of the faithfulness of god hallelujah some of us ladies may be standing here you look weak you look like a failure forget about it just let my god the one that can pick a man from a donkey pick a man from a donkey one more time say lord make me successful against all odds kapala kataya when all is said and done i will be standing some of you have been named like jabez that all you've brought to those around you is sorrow but don't give up don't give up it doesn't take long in spite of the limitations i may not know what to do but i submit myself hallelujah hallelujah please be seated god bless you let's get to the business of tonight the training may be hard today but you will thank me tomorrow believe me this is it's not it's not a way that has just been discovered it's always been there but the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. It doesn't matter what is wrong. Just pay attention to God. Give him time and see what he will make out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching really more as a life coach, if I would put it that way. I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies, and I want to challenge us. The focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions, but then um, my talk is to everybody, but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year say amen. amen so before we start all the gentlemen rise aside from our elders prof please sit down but every gentleman rise don't laugh rise we are not playing games please the teaching has started if you are not sure what you are stand up hallelujah Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will be successful. Regardless of where I am now. Regardless of what I do not know now. I make up my mind. That my world will celebrate me. I refuse to fail. It's a decision that I've made. I refuse to fail. I declare. That my family my sphere of influence and God will be proud of me God bless you please sit down first Corinthians 13 verse 1 please everybody write especially the men whether you are standing even if you are sitting on a tree get a piece of paper this night and write you know I've told us when you come especially for those of us who are new please Get a good notebook or something. Um, make sure you are writing. One of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life. Please listen carefully. Pay attention. The dynamic nature of life. Life 
is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions everybody say transitions um, in in biology or primary science they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects right it starts from what egg larva some of you got zero you still will get zero today after many years from egg some of you are saying adult how can it be that hmm? and so we see that there are what transitions and at every stage the rule is different hallelujah at every stage now for us humans there are phases of transitions you start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood right and then you get into teenage and from teenage people say young adult I, I've, I've told you my position in those things i don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child whether you are young or old is irrelevant adults and from adults it continues like that and at the end of your life you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity so one of the challenges watch this and i truly thank god for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry what i call a balanced growth my obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of Christ, right? I attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of Christ. Maybe it's because of the apostolic office, but I hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other, right? So I don't want to raise people who are spiritual, tongue-talking people, but are broke failures in life. And on the other hand, I don't want to raise people who will build houses, be mighty people, and go to hellfire. Are you getting me? I don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues, but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married, the father looks at you and says, Young man, what is your name? Say, My name is, is Christian. You say, Huh? What, what, what difference does that make? What are you here for? You say, I saw a flower. I say, You, a flower. Where? You know? But. There are essentials that if we do not address, you see, part of the spirit of leadership, not just being a man of God, leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives. Are you following me now? If I go to a congregation where I'm talking to professionals, there is my approach, my examples, right? And my communications become different. If I'm teaching in a children's class, you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest. You are, you are spoiling those children. You are supposed to be teaching them how to press into God, you know, all of that. And you cannot be talking to, um, say, grand people of 70, 80 years. And you are talking to them and, you know, saying certain things. So, part of leadership and, and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are as, who are answering questions nobody is asking so while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the spirit is doing we must also be able to transit the body of christ the church is an institution right an institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies and part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year among other things is to trust god that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of jesus but then just just prophesying and saying the name of jesus be successful is a mirage you've done it for years nothing happened success is not an impartation there is nowhere in the bible where you impart success 
you can you can receive impartation of wisdom you can impart all of this but the bible says they are life to those who find them not to those who wish praise the lord are we there 13 verse 11 not 1 11 when i was a child that means when i was at a season of my life called childhood are you following me now certain things happened in my life at that point number one i did what my conversations were childish i spoke like a child and and nobody you don't rebuke a child if we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say say something and he says i want sweet you can't flog him he's speaking as a child that is the reality within his age range and it helps us know that the child is correct if you call a little child and looks at you and says where is my wife automatically you know he has been watching nonsense either house helps or people have have have, have raped his mind and transited him to realms that is not supposed to have gotten there are you getting what i'm saying now so there are seasons i speak like a child so you know a child first by conversation second i understood mindset i had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um, some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter and these children will not let me rest so today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service if you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here. You are going to, we are carrying you to where? A place where we we'll go and play or even Father Christmas or Father February or Father whatever is coming here. They will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my sweet? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that a car is coming. So I understood like a child right number three i thought like a child so those things are they characterize certain seasons but then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane whether you are prepared or not sooner or later transitions begin in our lives right I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known that that little boy playing around? You see that? See the guys, see some of you touching your face and saying, this is beard. Am I joking? When did he? Welcome to transition. I remember... I remember when I, was, when I was in secondary school, I think it was just one or two. There were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so, they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then these guys, you look like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure he's um, a nice Barbie in this and make sure he's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are Barbie, they say, what? Just, just keep lowering it. You don't even know what... You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say start. 
start whatever it looks like as you proceed i'll tell you whatever adjustments you make some of you even finish barbing and they say calves what difference does it make carving transitions are you following me now now whether you like it or not you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension are you getting what i'm saying this is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free. And then when you transit and forget you have grown, what you said yesterday and people kept quiet you say it tomorrow and they will slap you is that true because a transition has happened a mistake you made and god kept quiet as if he didn't see it you make it two years later you will pay for it dearly so our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what i want to share very briefly there are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives never forget these five areas number one is your spiritual life the first area you must focus your spiritual life talks about your relationship with jesus christ your relationship with jesus christ your passion about the things of god your passion about the house of God, your passion about spiritual activities, your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, it will start messing up your life. Now, look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but just touches it once in a while. And so, once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink hey, once in a while, smoking? I only saw him smoke once. Abba, it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. It's, it's a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the holy spirit and serious with god with traceable evidences of transformation traceable traceable you, you not you can't you can't say you love god and then we can't see the sign god is not a god is not a herbalist you love god you've worked with him there must be a traceable evidence number two finance everybody say finance all the men say finance Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God, but they are broke. 
is not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? Say, what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really? What did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good, right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy? I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in. Born again or not born again. Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of come in. You get married to the man and all of a sudden, the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transitions. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life otherwise you will be shocked as a pastor the way you pastor a church of 12 members 14 members is very different when 50 members come out of those 50 there's at least four or five wicked people they have they've been your 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 leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming that means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them. They are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, 
it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care if you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly, your career or your professional life, you must pay attention to it or generally speaking, your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace, you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention as you transit even in this season. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations, you can impact people, you can leave a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance where we are anointed, we are casting out devils, but then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen, any pastor any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who tore themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader when that happens. Bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You'll be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions 
you were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, -da 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 -da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. I see what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So, we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. On my way to better day. Please write very quickly. Why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Right. Why? The reasons. Reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason. There is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything, and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. 
Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you. She says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older. But their minds are not transiting with the new seasons. To understand the demands, the responsibilities. Lack of mental transition. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 said, When I was a child, spoke like a child, understood like a child. And he said, I thought like a child. But then he said something. He said, now that I am a man. What happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally, to match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindset. And there are three aspects we deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh, God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time. Dependency mentality because although it is scriptural, can I have one gentleman? Come, my brother. If this guy is my son, watch this. If this guy is my son, I have a scriptural injunction, right? As a father to take care of him. Is that true? To take care of him, to make sure that he eats well, make sure he loves God and all the responsibilities. But as the transition begins to occur in his life, this child is now becoming an adult. Is that true? That means that there must be a transition. But by the time this gentleman is 30 years, 25 years, and he's still having a dependency mentality. That's why we have so many men. They are married, but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do. Because they, the transition happened, but in their minds, they didn't transit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mommy, what do I cook for him today? He said, what did you cook yesterday? He said, say, Mom. He said, oh yeah, try Gary today. See that? So, that inability to stand to an extent, brothers and sisters, there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents' house. I'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything. Mommy prepares a room for him. He now carries his wife. Later on, the wife is pregnant. She gives birth. And they are all here. It's a terrible thing. It's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So dependency mentality. They were giving you pocket money, maybe 5,000, 10,000 per month. And now you graduate. And five years after graduation, you start frowning at your father. He doesn't understand why the bad look has happened. Because he expected that you would have realized. They gave you scholarship, you were blowing it. Buying books, buying, uh, buying boots, buying trainers, buying everything. After all, my father, he gave birth to me. Right? And now you are finished and your father says, um, I think you should be considering moving. Say, moving to where? Is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that. Shame on many young people. Because although they are old, we are quick to look for women. But very slow to transit. You see a lady, ah, I like this lady. And where are you? What are your plans? That transition, dependency mentality. 
Hallelujah. To an extent that you see a young man. Some of you are looking at me as I'm talking to you now. You are in this category. You are seated and you get up shamefully. Very shamefully. And you call your old parents from their pension. And you say, Popsy, yeah. Can you transfer something to me? And he says, okay, things are not going on. I says, it's always like that. You're always, and you caught the call. And you are raking. And your mediocre friends are massaging. He says, calm down. Please calm down. Calm down. You know old people with this, their thing. And your mother is crying on phone at home. And say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not even this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working. But still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, Mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who, everywhere you go, when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say, well, He's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, Please. John is not around. He said, ah, are you not John? He said, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't, learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people. And when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, Mommy. She looks at the husband and says, Daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to JS1. Five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do. Just step into people's rooms. And when they see you coming, they say, lock the door. Lock the door. This parasite is coming. Your life is not supposed to be that way. Hey, hey, look, hold on, please. I hope as we are laughing, we are listening. Your life is not supposed to be like that. A parasitic life. Everybody runs away from you. Because you have a dependency mentality. You never have the opportunity to manage situations. You have headache. You are running around expecting everybody to say, you, you see that, and, and the ugly part is when it happens for men. It makes, it's okay if it happens for women. But a matured man and another matured man, oh boy, sorry, oh, you have headache. What is that? Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. 
mommy where are you come and take me to the hospital you are 30 years dependency mentality so that's what happens when that kind of man gets married his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities dependency no food at home eh? so what no food that's it now they sack a man from work 10 years later he has not gotten another job and he doesn't care they say what happened to you know the way nigeria railway corporation that time we we're working railway I was working in Nitel. I was working in this. And it's qualified. The CVs are there. Ah, you hear me this night. Bless you, please. Mindsets. Dependency mentality. You must get out of it. Do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody. Say, I am a blessing. Not a parasite. Say it, I am a blessing not a parasite when you were small when you visit your uncle once you are going they, they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bone vita now you go and meet them they are old and you see that you say uncle i'm going no he said may the lord bless you i had you you are a graduate now where did you even serve i served in ondo and immediately you finish they say ah so they gave you all those twenty thousand allowances yeah those things they gave us and now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle you are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I will ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy. That dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many YEC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do expo in jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we're still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. 
Or guy, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria? There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize. There is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family, now nah, I'm not, of course, you know we pray. Next week is miracle service, right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you, it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, all of you in your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture and said, we are, we, are, we, are all, we are all, there's no marriage coming. It's like that. This is our family, sir. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life. Someone owes you making your success happen. Someone owes you making your life. Are you getting my point? That, that mentality, the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being. It's an entitlement mentality.
we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors every time we're mentioning the things that make us fail we never talk about ourselves we never say our contribution to the equation hallelujah um elijah why did you slap shay i slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence and this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk i'm watching you i'm coming for you you see we never say look i got this wrong I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something. There is my outlook about life. There is my perspective. It's ego stinging to come to a point where you accept. But that is the point of true liberty. Are you getting what I'm saying? I begged my father for a car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused. If my father only gave me the car. Wouldn't I be married by now? An entitlement mentality. I begged my father for jam money. He refused to give me. No, I've not written the jam. Let me fail, but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands. Please hear me, Koinonia. I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must quit that, that entitlement mentality from today. Some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and say i'm disappointed i asked you for five thousand you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know i respect you as my mother but i'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning when i know cook ah you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality. Something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you. That's the entitlement mentality. Pastor Jake, I beg, I feel get something from you. He said, no, what for? And you're hungry. Entitlement. That's why you see in many churches, there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony. Oh, God gave me three million and somebody's waiting for them immediately after the service. Say, well done, sir. Your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life and it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? And eh, Nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um... I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Food stuff has finished. And you say, um, so how can I help you now? Say, I need like 30. 30 will do me. Look at, he's, he's seeking help from somebody. And he's coming with a childish, right? Entitlement mentality. There are some of us who... And that's the danger. The danger there is when somebody starts helping you, it almost becomes like a right. Have you seen people that came to our homes or our families? They were trained. Parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. 
you see a man and his wife maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month right very soon they start complaining i've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband ah. what did you expect i noticed the way she puts food for my own husband you are squatting in somebody's house entitlement mentality my uncle gave me a job in this company how can i be in this company my uncle is there and i'm not one of the directors my uncle uncle solomon that grew up in our boys quarters i cooked for him so what so what you come late they've put a circular in in your in your reception desk resume work by 6 30 you come by 10. you've done that for three years the dm they didn't promote you your uncle has done everything to lift you and you are not cooperating yet entitlement mentality how many people have we hated innocently in life how many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality to an extent some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother i refuse that mentality i refuse it i refuse it i refuse it in the name of jesus christ is god speaking to us some of these things i'm saying when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow just let it enter you because it will it will refine you and it will make you as gold Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, Miracle Service, and they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone. But it's, I wanted to show all of you, I wanted us to project it here. Our old six Massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can walk i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up we have the video i think we have the video of our 2007 crusade you will see all of us there you see victor the head of department of protocol they all held firewood on their head hey, oh. that's what the song they were singing and jumping Hey, and you see us so lean, looking like, like whatever. Transitions. But here we are today. Ten years after now, we will look back. You will see the pictures of today. And you will smile. You will tell your daughter, that was me. Say, are you hearing? That was me. I was serving the Lord all my life. So don't think, is this lie that most of our parents lied to us. They said they were an SU president. They were the best footballer in their school. They were the best everything. Our own has proof. You can see it and you can know. Praise the Lord. One last mentality. Mediocre mentality. Mediocre mentality. Mediocre mentality. We are still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres. And I'm, I've just touched on number one, medio mentalities, mindsets, really. Mediocre mentality. What is a mediocre mentality? It's the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal. It's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven is a mediocre mentality that mindset of being small have you had people like that me all i want god just give me one small golf one 
two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We're happy. We're a simple, nice family church. We're happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We're there. We're not doing anything. We're not letting anybody know what God. We're happy. We're okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. And they will break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement is tied to one word influence. One word influence. Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free influence I've studied revivals I've studied um, technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what I'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there I teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong if Koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members, you imagine that. We call that influence. Where one person represents a nation. Influence. Influence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please don't ever reject influence in your life because God wants to give it to you. It was through influence Jesus was able to advance the kingdom. The Bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver it says in in matthew chapter 5 it says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth you are not just a tongue talker he calls you the salt of the earth he calls you the light of the world and he says you are a city not like a city not a village you are a city Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small. Souls are saved because of the influence. Destinies are changed because of the influence. During the retreat, media people told us the targets that they want on Facebook and the rest. And I told them, go for it. We are going all the way for it. Let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage in nigeria if one person owned a television station is that true television station i remember that time you own a television station they tell you every kind of thing and god said come on where are those apostles and men and women started rising 2005 the lord revealed to me that there will be 37 christian stations in nigeria and today how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media are you getting what I'm saying? 
all the technological gurus and the rest imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention jesus but imagine that you put it on and and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song whether you like it or not you must buy it hallelujah praise god you must make your presence known is this is the is is the principle of dominion part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory then they will adopt your ideologies then they will embrace your convictions if there are if there are hundred millionaires i'm not talking of one million real millionaires in this place i guarantee you your spheres of influence will i something happened i think um i went one of our ladies here she's she's technically my account officer with one of the banks and um and uh we're going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said i should get back into banking with them and all of that and then eventually i went she had prepared everything when i got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before i know it i saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet i said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeting ah the man squared up and said oh, well done sir i told him i said this this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank look at her see that what does that mean promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job the influence of the kingdom i don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to god i want you to know that the more you have results the more your words become powerful Results add weight to your words. Results Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work, within a short time, when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined, you can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead. But last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing one more time. There's an army, there's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way, I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. To break every chain.
it is not the will of God for you to be small it does not glorify God in any way when you are small John 15 I think from verse 8 when you read down it says hearing is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit much fruit not little fruit much fruit much fruit look I'm not talking of some carnal fleshly wanting to make it in life I'm talking of lifting with an assignment influence that is intentional as a means to an end it makes your words powerful you are able to speak hallelujah that's why we must speak into your life oh you will get the oil company job that devil will not stop you the, the, no there are the principles you will get it you will be wealthy you will be blessed the devil will be alive to see it I will never raise a poor congregation never raise a weak congregation a weak congregation produces a weak man of God a weak ministry that has no voice I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next this useless man part of the noisemakers no that when you listen you say this is it I had one word and it changed me you must embrace the influence of the kingdom I don't know what you have been taught but you must change your mind we have small parents innocent but small small families small everything small i got my small degree i read my thing i don't even want anything let me just get i got one teaching in one lea school i'm okay seven thousand is enough what am i looking for in this life stop that stop that kind of devilish thinking remember let me always balance this i'm not talking of this carnal lustful affinity for the things of the world i'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention right the exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of god there was a time jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and pharisees the guys were angry they said they are not listening to us again ah what happened look let me tell you koinonia we are a city we are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them. He said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you 
truly are. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels. Closely tied to laziness is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it? I will do it. I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their hand? Go and touch it too, if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging no matter who you are and i have found something with lazy people hate begging they hate begging they feel embarrassed don't worry just bring it bring it bring it i'll do it fast lazy people hate begging hallelujah Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that alright? Alright, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down. Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness, inaction, procrastination, that inertia, refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, no problem. 
you sit with that money immediately you see before you know it you have spent 200 naira from it see that before you know it you finish the money you just sit down there let me tell you one way the devil kills people sleep i know god gives sleep but satan can also give sleep sleep this sleep it looks little i was teaching the school of ministry students and i told them if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years you've slept for how long you've slept for 10 years of your life exactly by the time you are 30 years just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping you sleep from 8 o'clock you wake up round 1 waking is around 4 you just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around when there is none you lie down you wake up around 9 that's the second phase of, of the waking up it's not like you sleep marathon you wake up just browse around and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep before you know it is 1 o'clock you just yawn and stand up and you sit down you are lazy as a guy you will be poor guaranteed please brothers and sisters hear me love not sleep too much it will rob you of the anointing i i don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep no no sir no sir i've been awake today since at about I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? You lie down and sleep. It brings a lot of things. Forgetfulness. You are 30 years. You forget about everything. Somebody says, I'm coming. He comes and he says, why are you here? He says, I said, I'm coming. He says, oh, I remember. He says, but you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down on your bed and wake up you didn't know that anybody lay down there because you sleep and and the sleep is so deep you wake up and you are frowning ah why did you wake me it's a bad attitude I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentleman. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life. One. Two. Anointing disappearing from your life. Wake up. Don't you know there is the mystery of the night time? Look at the prophets in the Bible. Look at men look job said um, i mean the psalmist said in the night time during his time of meditation when things are revealed to him the night time is when great men get insights is the time where men of power travel in the spirit okay it's, it's, it's true that you are tired at least three four or so wake up don't let your body cheat you you need to drag it and say no way I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life. Who is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on, on that deep med. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody, please, don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny. I'm not telling you not to sleep. There are times I take out time to rest. But brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. 
There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira. And you wear and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? I've not served. Do they take people who have not served? Did you go? Did you go? You see, ba, look at me. Many of us write a lot of prayer requests. Next week now, there will be another one. I, I, you know I kneel down to pray and I see it. Some of you is full scab. You write it and then you write, uh, please turn over. That means it does not finish. Oh, there's still some more. But the issue is that, do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it, you will need to take action? You see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say I'm a child. Warren Buffett Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old. Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children. They say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you, if you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, what are you, what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it, you now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. 
Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all will not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. No, ah! no please. Oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man. Me, men. Look at my children. Me, men. The woman was saying, I said, Madam, I'm a man. No, please, this one that you are talking about men, I see it's not every man that everybody blah 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 blah. The woman started crying. I said, "Madam, God is bringing a good." Said, okay, you know how women talk. Okay, well, let's see. Fear, fear. That's what has stopped some of us from being champion. You are used to failing. The day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded, they say it's a lie. Don't play games with me. Don't you know that the divine life, part of the blessings of the divine life, is a life of success no matter how you have failed in life hear me i want you to believe that you can come back alive are you hearing me say i refuse to fear say it i refuse to win. see there is a there is an let me let me use this slang there is an i don't send mentality you have to give life and give people if you want to make it some of us are too careful what will what will zuera say now what will mom, we are too careful that 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 excessive care is not is not care unto faith it's care unto doubt and it will kill you there are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear what if i capsize in a gutter you have refused to learn there are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things god gave you opportunity to learn so many things there's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. I said, Guy, me, please. I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses and tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. Get up and in the name of Jesus, take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinone, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse, to fear. refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. So let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish 
there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life everybody knows that there is honor upon your life hallelujah longevity has a principle longevity influence has a principle and he said in matthew chapter 13 now i think verse 11 or so if i'm not mistaken he said it has been given unto you say it has been given unto me one more time it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life nobody will just come and bless you for nothing when during our series the mysteries of the kingdom i teach on the law of exchange and i told you nothing goes for nothing nothing goes for nothing there is an exchange that must happen hallelujah very important these are some of the reasons why people become failures in life and part of this is working in our lives one or two or more or for some of us even all of them we are going to challenge challenge the gates of failure and say in this season of the rain i'm breaking out no way i won't remain like that i won't park where my father parked and become a failure he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me Rise up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight. These are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming. I need to prepare us. I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, you are leading me. Day by day, I keep rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer points, the five areas that you must focus on your spiritual life, financial life, family life, career life, relationship. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one and say, Lord, I must excel in every one of these areas. Go ahead and pray. I excel in my spiritual life. I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. 
I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. I'm on fire for God. Burning, burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. My home is a place of love, a place of blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm an exceptional father, an exceptional husband, an exceptional leader. Pray, an exceptional priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I gave you five reasons or four reasons why people become failures. Look, be sincere as we pray this prayer now. The media is helping us. You're going to see it here. When you see that there is any, any area that applies in your life, through the ministry of prayer, uproot it. There are mindsets that you know must change. Attack them in the place of prayer. Don't feel condemned, but don't keep quiet. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I refuse a dependency mentality. I refuse a dependency mentality. I am a giver. I am a blessing, not a liability. Koinonia, pray. I refuse to give excuse for failure. I refuse to excuse failure. I refuse to explain failure in my life. Pray, 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 pray. Inside and outside, pray. Pray. This is a prophetic moment. This is about your destiny. Pray. Pray against the spirit of laziness. I refuse to be lazy. From today, I kill laziness. Procrastination. I cost it for my life. Prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. Pray. Pray against the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse the fear of failure. The fear 